Gesundheit. Okay. Um, this first portion is something that Sister Haskin prepared for us. And okay, I'm not seeing something that says share my screen. This meeting and my I still have that sign that says this meeting is being recorded right over top of everything. So to share your screen, you have to transfer host to whoever you want to share the screen. Is that me? See, that's what I think. I came on first, even though the link was Sister Hal's. So everything is just funky. So oh, if, it, okay. if you are the host. It's showing oh. up now. OK. okay. So, sorry yeah, about that. I will bring this up and I just have this still this big thing in the middle of my screen. I'm going to leave the meeting and come back in. Okay, you okay. make it. All right. You practice it at home and then it's not quite the same, but here we go. Okay, can you all see that? <clears throat> well, my name is Andrew here. And I'm Ryan Basil. And today we're going to show you a few of our favorite tips and tricks on the Family Search mobile app. Are you guys able Don't to hear that? It. Go ahead and download the app. <clears throat> I want to start today by adding a memory to someone in my tree. Here I am in my pedigree. I'm going to find the person that I have a photo of. Tap on the person and underneath their name, go to memories. Here I can see any photos, stories, documents, or audio that have been added to this person. Adding memory from your mobile device using the app is extremely convenient considering that you can add directly from your phone's camera or microphone. And you can write stories about this person and add images using your phone's camera. If I wanted to add a photo of LaRose, I would tap this plus. I would go to add a photo. I could take a photo, but I actually have one already. And this photo would get uploaded just like that. It's that easy to add memories from the Family Search Tree app. Next up is a feature called My Contributions. If you're on an iPhone, you'll come down here to the More menu in the bottom right corner. On an Android phone, you'll go here. And once you're in the More menu, go ahead and tap on My Contributions. This is where you can find all the different things you've contributed over the past years including sources, memories like photos, audio, and people that you've added. You can also see changes you've made and private people that you've added to your tree. Okay, let me begin by saying the next two features that I'll be talking about are useful only if you have what we call a full tree. So um, you can see here that in my tree, this goes back to my great grandparents and even beyond. And so um, again, these features are useful only if you have a full tree. So go ahead and add your ancestors back as far as you can. And uh, I will show you how to add and attach record hints momentarily. But first I wanted to talk about some options that are on this pedigree. In the lower right hand corner, you'll see what looks like a settings icon. I'm going to go ahead and tap that. And you can see that I have some options here. The default is what you see here. Uh, you have an option of birth country, which colors these tiles based on where they were born. And as I expand out, those things should change and new countries will be added here. Um, the other option that I was uh, wanted to talk about is sources. The thing, a source is like a, we also call it a record. And that includes things like census records and birth and death and marriage certificates. 
the more that your ancestors have of those things, the higher the quality of the information. And so as I go back, um, you'll see that some ancestors have many, uh, some have few and some even no sources. Same thing with stories, photos, and research helps here that, that uh, you can look at and see kind of a bird's eye view of, of uh, your pedigree. Another option here is what we call the fan chart. I'm going to go ahead and tap on that and you can see I have it set to go back seven generations. I can change that up to seven generations. I've selected seven here uh, for this demonstration, but I can change this again, same options to birth country, sources, uh, stories, photos, and you can kind of look and see, you know, who has what and, and read about and, and discover new things about your ancestors or add to what is already there. The next feature I wanted to talk to you about is called Ancestors with Tasks. Now, this is the number one feature used on the Family Search mobile app. Um, people attaching what are called record hints. And now uh, we've, we've talked about what a record is. A, a record is a is a, you know, a census or a birth or a death or marriage certificate, something like that. Um, and a record hint means family search went out and found what they think is your ancestor inside of one of these records. And so I'll show that to you. And the way you get there is on iOS, there's this thing at the bottom called tasks. And on Android at the very top, there's, there's three um, lines there, you'll tap that, and inside that there's an item called Ancestors with Tasks. So let's go ahead and tap on that now. And here's that list of ancestors with tasks. I've got 42 in this case, and these are all of my ancestors. If I want, I can uh, do a long press on one of these and get uh, a relationship. It shows me how I'm related to this person. Um, I'm going to just scroll down here a little bit to Ellen Bright, and I'm going to go ahead and tap on this blue icon. That blue icon just represents a record hint, meaning, that, like I explained, that we found some records with this person listed in it. Um, and so in this record, which is a, a marriage certificate, we see that Ellen Bright um, who's the daughter of Margaret Pearl Black and William Lemuel Parker, married Eli Laritz Helg Hansen. And they were married in 1948 in Orange uh, County, California. He was 48 at that time. She was 44. And um, we can go ahead and tap compare now that we've kind of gleaned some information from that. Right away, we're asked just a, one question, is this document a match for Ellen Bright in the tree? So here we have the family tree column, everything that's found in the family tree. And in this column, we have everything that's found in the uh, document, in this case, the, the record, which is the marriage certificate. And in this document, Ellen is the mother of the bride. And so I'm gonna scroll down here. And what I'm looking for is comparing names, dates, places, and relationships. And so you can see that William Lemuel Parker, in the, his name is actually William Lemma Parker. That's her spouse and their child, Margaret Pearl Black. Um, in the record, her name was Mara Par Parker Black. But let's go ahead and click on Margaret Pearl Parker to see if she married someone with the last name Black, because the birth dates are lining up there. So I'm just going to click or tap right here on Margaret Pearl Parker. And let's look at her spouses. And she did, in fact, marry a William Benton Black. And it looks like he passed away in 1942. So if I go back now, um, this is uh, what looks, what appears to be a second marriage. Um, because we saw just on the previous screen that, again, this, this happened in 1948. Her first husband passed away in 1942. So I'm going to go back in here and say, yes, these, I'm seeing these relationships line up. Uh, the names and dates are lining up. Um, but we're, you can see that we're missing from the tree the groom's family. Her second husband and his parents are not yet in the tree. So we're going to go ahead and 
type in here a reason statement, and that will be um, a marriage certificate uh, matches family members in the family tree. And I'm going to go ahead and hit yes, attach. And it says, tells me good work. I added it to Ellen. Now there's other people in this record that we need to attach to the tree. So I'm going to go ahead and hit review others. And there's this really great animation that pushes all these people along the top. And I can scroll and jump to different people. You can see it's already attached to the mother of the bride. Next, let's jump to the father, William. And it carries over my reason statement here. And I can expand the spouse and children if I just want a reminder. But I'm going to go ahead and attach it to William, Margaret Pearl Parker, their daughter. It is also for her. You can see there's some things that are different here. We just point that out to, to call your attention to things that uh, might be different. But we're going to go ahead and hit yes, attach. And here's where the groom is not yet in the tree. So I'm going to tap this add new person or find a match. And it asks me if for any of these family members, Eli, Laritz, Helga, Hansen, which none of those match up. So I'm going to do no match. And so it pre-fills the information in there for me. It tells from the record, you know where, when he was born in 1900, who his parents are and who his spouse are. And it's going to create all those relationships for me. I actually noticed that in the record that I, that I was looking at, it said Denmark. And in fact, let me just quickly go show you. I can tap right here to see an image of this. So I'm going to tap on that. And it will load, if I scroll to the bottom, I can click on this, tap on this image, and it will load a high resolution image of this. And if I, if I zoom in here, this Eli Laritz Helg Hansen, you can see he is native of Denmark. So I now know where he was born. So I'm going to go back, I'm going to back out, and I'm going to say, I know that he was born in Denmark. So I'm going to go ahead and add that as his place of birth. Denmark. And go ahead and select that country from the drop down and hit continue. And uh, it's going to say there's no match for that person in the family tree. So go ahead and add him to um, the, the pedigree to the family tree now. And we're going to push over the marriage information from the record into his family tree person and hit attach for that. And now we're going to add his father. We only have his first and first name and last name. We don't have a birthplace for the father. These people are not Carl Hansen, so I'm going to hit no match. I'm going to say that he is deceased. We know that he is because his son was born just in the early 1900s, so he's going to be much older than that. So I'll hit continue and add. And I'll say, yes, let's attach it to him now. And his wife, the mother of the groom, let's go ahead and add her as well. She is none of these family members. I'm going to hit no match. They, those names and dates don't match up to, it looks like Kirstie. And we also know that she's deceased. We don't know when or where she was born or died, but we'll go ahead and continue and add her to the tree. And that is Source Linker. Like I said, this is far and away the number one used feature of the Family Search app. Uh, just adding this is something you can quickly do while you're waiting in line at the grocery store or out um, and about. It's a, it's a quick thing you can do to quickly see, you know, Again, comparing names, dates, and relationships, and it's a great, great way to add new family members to the family tree. All right, the last thing that I wanted to show you is uh, this feature called multiple screens, and you get there a little bit different on Android, uh, but we'll go ahead and show that. But basically, you go to your settings, um, and that's here underneath the more menu on iOS and I'll go ahead and tap settings and I'll scroll down and you can see there's this option right here that says enable multiple screens. I'm going to toggle that on and back back out here. And you can see I'm, I'm presented with this 
uh, bottom bar that allows me to add more screens. So I'm going to just hit that plus button right there and it copies the current screen, which is really nice when I'm doing things like attaching records. You know, if I'm in a task and I'm looking at, uh, you know, let's say I'm looking at Carol King Jones page, but I also want to um, look at um, the, the hints that are attached to him. So I could go ahead and tap that. And in this other page, if I just scroll across here like this, um, you can see I, I have another page here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that tasks and go ahead and go to Carol King Jones. And if I come back down and scroll, you can see this becomes really, really quick uh, and very handy if I'm looking at lots of different information with lots of different people, um, especially in attaching records where you may need to look at somebody's family members um, on one screen and then look at the record on the other screen. So this is, again, this is multiple screens, really, really nice when you're doing things like attaching records or need to do a lot of comparing of information. Hey, thanks for watching and we hope this was really helpful for you. Thanks for joining us. Enjoy the rest of Reefsec. Bye. Okay, now I'm going to go into Family Search on my computer and show you similar things there <clears throat> as what they showed on the app. Um, so if I'm here at the part where it says Family Tree, if I go down there, there's the part that says My Contributions. So I can click on that. Um, so things I've changed, private people I've added, and also it figures out statistics for the things that you've done. And you know, some years I've done lots more than others. <laughs> okay, now if we go back, whoops, that's not where I wanted to go. Then they went into the tree and showed you some interesting things that you can do there. Um, right up here in the upper left, it lets you do the things like the fan chart. And once I'm in the fan chart, I can choose things. Um, so if I say family lines, then it will divide it up and you can see um, this is my mother's mother's side, all the yellow. My mother's father is the reds. My dad's mother's family is green and my dad's father is blue. And then my family and descendants is purple. So that's an easy way to just separate things out if you want to look at it that way. These other things I think are kind of interesting to just look at where you know where your family is from. I'm trying to see where they've put the I'm not sure where they've put their little legend on which um, which country is which color. It's probably under your pictures of everybody. Oh Yep, there it is. <laughs> okay. Um, we can also do the same things that they did. You can choose who has sources, who has stories, who has photos, all those things. Another one that we have here is ordinances. Um, and it will show you very quickly who, who needs something. Um, let me move this over again. So green is the request. And the darker blue is something in progress. And the yellow means that there's a reason there's something to do, but you can't request it. So that makes it really easy to see on your direct lines anyway of ancestor work that needs to be done. <clears throat> the other thing that they talked about <clears throat> Is here on the, they said, um, they called it ancestor tasks. 
and it's here on the main page on the computer. Over here at the right, um, you can choose if there's temple work, you can choose records, um, or you can just add them all. And it's the same kind of thing. So if I choose records and I clicked on one of these, it would let me compare records just like he did on his and attach them. Um, I just want to mention there that there is, I, I really liked the things that he did. He didn't just attach it, he checked things. Like if you recall, there was um, his, um, the daughter in the, or actually the bride in that marriage record had a different last name. And so instead of just saying, well, this is probably her anyway, he went back into her record and saw that she had been married and that was her married name. So when we choose to attach records, we need to, to make the effort to make sure that that's really the right person. And you may need to do a little checking before you just add it all on. So I like that he showed us that. Um, and that's, unless you have questions about that specific thing on here, um, that's all that I have for you. A lot of it is just giving it a try and it will generally lead you through the whole process. So. so are there any questions about what we've looked at or? We've all done it already. <laughs> I think for me, it's more being just brave enough. Like I can click and see those things, but to actually do the attaching or sometimes you have to unattach things, that's still scary to me, even though I've done it a few times. It's still scary to me that I, am I doing the right thing? Am I attaching the right people? But you know, I figure if you attach the wrong person, someone's gonna let you know. <laughs> yep, yeah, well, you just do your best to to check all of the information that you can see on them and, and make the best decision that you can and use the spirit to help you know. All right, I have a question, not necessarily on what we talked about tonight, but um, as I was going a few things with the video, I noticed a while ago, I was trying to add a picture of myself too, because there's no picture of myself on here. And I see it under memories, but it's not up where I want it to be on my showing up on my tree. So I don't know, I must not be doing it right. <laughs> okay, let me get. Um, this is just on my phone. I think I did it on my phone or something. Okay, if you go, can you do it on your computer? Because I'm not sure how to do it on the phone. Um, but if you go into memories, you can. Or let me go back into that and I'll share our screen Maybe again. Maybe I'll check on my computer because apparently Mark's gotten into it and he has a picture of me on his. <laughs> All right, let me well, let me let me check here. No, it's not on mine. That's weird. Okay, but I am on my computer, so the picture I wanted to add is under memories. Okay, um, I'm finding a person and so do you know how to get to a, an individual page? Let me share my screen again here. That's so weird. Okay, so I've, I've got here an individual and if we go to memories, if you come up here and click on the portrait area, this will let you choose which portrait to use. It, you can choose from one of your pictures in the memories. Okay, well, I knew it was probably easy. Yep, that's all I'm there ready. is to it.
And then it lets you edit it to decide how big or small around your yeah, photo you want it to be. It will give you the little circle because that's the shape it will use and let you place that over a picture in the place. All right, that cool. I think I got it. All right. Thanks. You're welcome. Got any other questions that we can help you with today? Um, I just had an idea. Um, maybe somebody on the family uh, Temple of Family History Committee can also post this on Facebook because I know a lot of people in the ward read the, the Facebook page so they know that this is happening. I know Bishop did send out an email, mm -hmm. um, but if it's placed on the Facebook page like the day of or the night before, we might get more participation just as a okay. reminder. I'll have the Bishop do that because I don't do Facebook, but we'll. <laughs> well, I mean, you've got others on your committee. I know Stella does Facebook a lot. Okay. Maybe we'll get <laughs> that assignment. <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks for the suggestion. So on Facebook, if you did Facebook, um, I can see it being easily having the link mm -hmm. to the meeting, but there was plenty of information on the letter that comes out. I don't know how easily that would be to put that amount of material on Facebook, but certainly the invite and the topic and the link maybe, I don't know, I'm just wondering. Okay, I'm going to stop our recording, I think, if that's okay. Yeah, so really quickly, I was just thinking since you're recording this, what you could do is just share the recording.